But Candida Solution is about giving you all the tools you need to bring Candida back into balance. First of all, a little bit of an understanding is that Candida is a fungi yeast, which means it's much bigger than a bacteria and, and when it takes hold, it's a lot harder to get rid of. Now, unfortunately, a lot of the fungicides uh, that they use nowadays are no longer effective in it. And half of the ones that they are using are based on some of the treatments I'm going to be talking about anyway, essential oils and, and herbs and so on. But it's important to understand that it's an opportunistic species. So it's in your gut, it's in everybody's gut, but for some reason, I'll mention in just a moment, it takes over. So it's always going to be there. But when it takes over, it's got a whole raft of virulence factors um, that make it hard to control and eliminate. And so that's why it's really important to tackle it from a number of areas at the same time. Uh, one of these is, is a cloaking device. It's got a little biofilm that it forms with other microorganisms and it makes it almost invisible to your immune system. Which then brings me to what are the conditions and why have you got it? Why is it in everybody? But well, it, it doesn't affect everyone at the same time. In fact, it affects around about 70 to 75% of women you ready? This is the biggest population at least once and five to seven percent around about they have reoccurring um, bouts of candida overgrowth. So how do we control this overgrowth and get it back into balance permanently? And the critical thing is this with this fungi, there are a couple of major factors that lead to its overgrowth, to it taking over and control. And the first one is the immune system. So anything that has where there's a compromisation of the immune system, um, whether it's uh, you know, uh, cancer treatments, um, HIV, AIDS, uh, conditions like diabetes 2 or autoimmune conditions also make you more vulnerable to these. Diabetes 2 has other factors in there too, but anything where your immune system is compromised, that's why the, the biggest threat of candida is in hospitals with those who are most, um, uh, who have the most compromised immune system. And the second one is the gut. Now, the gut and the immune system are closely interwined, okay? Most of your immune system is around your gut, and by looking after your gut, you look after your immune system, and vice versa. But we know that gut dysbiosis, when your gut is out of balance, is when candida takes over. Now, candida can literally be every, all, all of your mu mucous membranes, so all of your, your, your mouth, your, your uh, larynx, your uh, uh, stomach, right down, uh, intestine, small intestine, um, urinary tract areas, uh, vaginal areas for, for women and so on, all of those areas can be affected. By the way, also moist areas of the skin, so in between toes and areas like that. And it's all coming basically from the same area, the gastrointestinal tract, so it's really important to get that back in balance. And when your gut is out of balance, in a state called dysbiosis, that's when candida and other microorganisms can take over. So it's about understanding how to look after that. And the third major factor contributing to this imbalance is the Western processed diet. The diet that we eat, the overprocessed foods, the too much sugar, which feeds candida, the grains, which feed candida, the gluten, which poisons the good bacteria, uh, the vegetable oils that all literally um, poison your gut and, and, and lead to inflammation in the gut. So all of these various components of our Western diet are leading us to increase the risk of candida. And so we've got immune system, gut and processed diet, and they're all linked together because if, if you're on a processed diet, not only is your gut in a state of dysbiosis, not functioning properly, out of balance, but you've also got a compromised immune system because it cannot work on a, a, an unhealthy gut and an unhealthy diet. It needs all of those. So that brings us back to the program and why our program is different to others in that uh, the treatment, first of all, involves building up your immune system. Now, these are all, these are all going to run concurrently. Um, building up your immune system because your immune system is the most important part for controlling candida. So we want to build up your immune system. We don't want to compromise it with toxic chemicals or toxic um, or pharmaceuticals. We want to build your immune system. Then we want to starve the microorganism and poison it so get the numbers right back down. Outcompete it. So we want to then encourage all of the microorganisms in the gut. And here it is particular ones you've heard of many, many times, like lactobacillus and bifidobacteria, help out compete it. And we'll go into that in a bit more detail. 
And then once we've done that, or while we're doing that, we want to repair the gut because the gut in a state of dysbiosis has inflammation, oxidation, and leaky gut, which is why you get many of the symptoms of candida. Leaky gut is why you're ending up with many of the symptoms of candida. Uh, all of the gut-related symptoms, all of the internal, the fatigue, the mind, uh, lack of focus control, all of those things. And when it comes down to the symptoms, Look, the, the symptoms the symptoms of candida can mimic just about every other gut-related illness. So you could be having, there's a big overlap between IBS, inflammatory, um, oh, sorry, uh, irritable bowel syndrome and uh, inflammatory bowel disease, IBD, and uh, reflux and celiac disease. There's a big overlap between those symptoms. And we find that people who have candida can have these conditions and these people have these conditions can have candida and vice versa. And again, those symptoms overlap. Oral thrush is probably the easiest to identify and that's when you have that big, thick, white coating on your tongue. And that's probably the first indicator. But in all of the gut issues that you know about, you've heard about, can be candida as well as everything from lack of concentration focus and mental health type issues. So the answer here is let's get started on the program and work out what to do. Now it's important to isolate specific treatments that can be effective in helping to control candida. And the idea here is I'm going to give you options, lots and lots of options. And the best option for you is to actually mix and match these various ones according to where you are, who you are, what you've got access to. But I'll go through the list and I'll explain some of it as we go through. And without any doubt, the best one there shows up as coconut oil. It's got these MCTs, medium, tr medium chain triglycerides, which are very effective in helping control. So just on their own, each of these ingredients have around about 40 to 60% effectiveness. So imagine if you combine them. So the coconut oil, you can have coconut, coconut fiber has been shown to be effective, um, but it can't be the coconut sugar. It has to be the actual coconut and the more of the fat, the better it is. Coconut oil, coconut milk, anything like that. Olive oil has been shown to be effective. And of course, we're here, we're talking extra virgin olive oil from a local source. The more of the polyphenols, it has its benefits primarily through the polyphenols in there, the, the color of it, so to speak, and the smell and the texture and taste of it. <clears throat> then you've got fish oils, which are a, a supplement, but I thought I'd put them in here because I'm dealing with oils. And fish oils overwhelmingly show a benefit in terms of boosting your immune system and helping control. Um, Candida. Now, what's great about all of these is they work at multiple levels, help some stop the biofilm formation, some of them promote the immune system, some of them, and they all do this at the same time. That's what's great about having this. Then you've got honey and bee products like propolis have been shown to be effective. Um, and in fact, there was a, there was a study where they combined um, honey, garlic, and I've forgotten the other ingredient, and each of those helped each other in terms of the, the actual treatment. Um, garlic, great addition there. It has so many beneficial properties. I've, I've done a video there on the health benefits of garlic. They're overwhelming for mental health, for cardiovascular health, and here, uh, absolutely gastrointestinal health, your gut microbiome. But it also has these potent antimicrobial properties that help control candida. So lots and lots of garlic. People are gonna say, well, how much garlic? That's a, they're the typical questions, and how much of all this? What can you put in there? So if you have two cloves of garlic, add three or four cloves of garlic. Um, is there a difference between cooked and raw? Yes, there is. And you've got garlic supplements too called aged garlic, which are shown to be very effective as well. So it's about mixing and matching and literally for a period there at least, adding what you can into your um, program, adding it into the anti-candida program. Um, some of the fruits like uh, grapefruits being shown to be effective. Cranberry juice comes up repeatedly and cranberries, but cranberry juice, but please make sure if you're going to do a juice, it's the least processed with the fiber, so it hasn't been processed out of it, and it has no sugar added. It cannot be sweetened with sugar. So make sure you get the right full 100% juices. Pomegranate juice and pomegranate exactly show up the, the, the same as being beneficial. They, they actually have done a lot of studies on pomegranate peel as well being effective. Um, I don't know if you can get that as a product out there, but uh, turmeric or the active ingredient curcumin, which everybody knows about, which is a, a makeup of curries. Curries, 
that mixture of curries is is a and, and it varies by the way curries vary according to different regions and locations and and formulas family formulas and so on but curries are potent uh, antimicrobial fantastic for the gut microbiome and your health and overall so mixing some curries in is a good way to get some extra turmeric but you can get curcumin and turmeric as supplements as well and the cousin of um, uh, turmeric is of course ginger so ginger works well moringa is is a, a green leaf and the seed of moringa both the leaf and the seed have been shown to be effective in controlling it uh, you can get it as a supplement you can get it as a powder in a lot of um, tropical countries you can actually get it growing uh, in your garden in the garden so you can get your own moringa leaf it's been shown to be effective and berries there is a big question about fruits fruit sugars and um, uh, uh, candida the overwhelming view is to stay away from fruit however the latest research suggests that fruit sugar is actually beneficial and so I'm going to tread middle ground here until we get a bit more research and suggest that the berries which show up hence why you've got the cranberry and the um, pomegranate and other things the berry juice is very very good or berries are very very good for helping control candida and and, and it's the polyphenols in them again these colorful big molecules that have this anti-candida effect then we go to things like our essential oils. Now here is the real treatment part because this we're gonna add into all our foods and so on and pee, and this is what we're gonna add extra. Now all these ones that I've listed down here can be had as um, herbs or spices. Um, they can be added literally from the rosemary on your bush you've got out front of the house or the back of the house or the garden or from the local grocer or you can do them as essential oils. Now, the reason they use essential oils in the studies is because they can control the amount a lot more than they can by saying 23 rosemary leaves, which is the equivalent of perhaps two drops of, of uh, rosemary essential oil. So they use essential oils, but the same principle can apply for any of these in terms of um, adding them to your food as well. So my message is you can add whatever these to your food and have some essential oils. Now, in most of the studies or the way they do it, when they're looking at um, tubes, test tubes, and they're looking at rats and mice and, um, and so on, and occasionally humans, the equivalent is just a couple of drops mixed in a glass of water. How much water depends on you. It's got a very strong taste. Now, with the essential oils, also make sure they're food-grade essential oils. Food-grade essential oils. Now, the great thing about the essential oils, too, is that because candida can infect various parts of our external um, body in terms of particularly in the fingers, in between the toes and um, other moist areas, uh, these can be diluted and applied liberally. Now, never don't apply them. Please don't apply them direct and neat as they are. They should always be diluted. And the best way there to find out uh, what concentration is to speak to the people where you get the oils from. But rosemary oil, oregano and thyme, they're all closely linked and potent. They're potent anti-candida um, and they're very, very much act as um, what you'd call prebiotic or, or phytobiotics. They promote the growth of the good bacteria as well as controlling the nasty ones. Citronella, cinnamon, uh, black cumin. Black cumin is uh, one also called nigella saffia. It's also called black seed, and I use the black seed itself in my smoothies, and I love the black seed oil. It gives it a very, very strong taste, and black seed is very concentrated. And again, all of these have so many benefits that you, while you're fixing up, while you're fixing up uh, and you know rebalancing your microbiomes with with candida, what you're doing is also reducing your risk of all these other diseases out there because of the benefits of all these curry leaf. Uh, peppermint, mentha piperta, clove, tea tree, uh, and eucalyptus. I put those together simply because I'm Australian and they're both from Australia. Tea tree and eucalyptus, a couple of drops of those. Uh, and of course, citrus, citrus essential oils like lemon essential oil, uh, uh, grapefruit essential oil, and uh, orange essential oil have also been shown to be effective. So we've got a list, a long list. And, and by the way, the list is 10 times longer uh, but most of the other oils, I didn't even know where they exist. So these ones you can actually get online. You can get through um, 
Uh, you can get them through multi-level marketing, social marketing, network marketing, different ways in there. Uh, but always make sure you get the best quality if you're going to take them in food so they're, they're food grade. So essential oils are an absolutely must in terms of treatment of candida. And then the next stage of that, and these can all be done at the same time. And the next stage of that is looking at probiotics because probiotics help out-compete the candida in the gut and in the various micro environments, but they also stimulate your immune system. So they're helping to um, you know, uh, rebalance your own immune system. And they're also helping with many other factors, e.g. like blood sugar regulation, um, which is an, has an impact on candida as well. So they, they operate at many, many different levels. So probiotics, um, Saccharomyces boulardii is the main one that shows up in the research. Again, these are available online and from most health food stores. And the key is to say, okay, which one can I get? Oh, can I get them all? They usually come in combinations. And the combinations, as long as you get a couple of these, are going to be effective. Because the, the research, again, lactobacillus, is a, um, lactobacillus and bifidobacteria down here are the ones you get in lots of yogurts. So if you don't want to take the powders, you can get the powders and mix them in uh, with your yogurts or, or ferment them yourselves. Um, KZI, Acidophilus, Rhamnosus, Ruterii uh, are, are different versions or different strains of the lactobacillus that have been shown to be effective against Candida. So getting a couple of those mixed with the Saccharomyces, um, you're, you're on the right track. And then Bifidobacteria, um, again, these are the main ones that we get in our gut when we've got a healthy gut. These are the major ones. Uh, and, and these are the ones which tend to get poisoned from a Western diet. Uh, gluten, for example, poisons these. Um, and the antibiotics wipe these out. And the sugar causes the overgrowth of other ones that compete, outcompete these ones. And the final part of this activity here is prebiotics and fiber. To get the best outcome of all of these as a supplement, you can either have them as a, a what's called a symbiotic, where they're mixed in together. So they come as a, as a, as a powder mixed with a, a kind of a fiber and the probiotics, or you can just add some extra fiber. And my, fiber, my, my preference is always um, one called K-fiber, which is a, it's not a, actually a, just a fiber, it's a complete food. And that's the way I look at it, and it feeds the gut microbiome. But increasing your fiber content, and again, uh, all of the research shows the vast majority of populations in Western cultures have extremely low fiber content, hence why we have dysbiosis and so many overgrowth like candida occurring. So fiber is a great addition to this to feed up the probiotics and keep everything working properly. The next stage is the supplements. We've got all of the diet and lifestyle issues. Now, what else can we add on to make a big difference? And the research shows that the addition of vitamin A and D actually help control candida. So they're great for the immune system, which is what you want as well, but they also actually help control candida. Now, the same with vitamin C. And people say, well, how much vitamin C? I already take, um, you know, a couple of hundred milligrams. I take three grams a day. That's three milligrams a day. And if I get sick, I take a lot more. So I want you to put it in perspective. You want to increase your dose of vitamin C. Green tea extract. Now, you can drink lots of green tea like I do and or add the, what are they called, the epicatechins that you find in green tea. So you can get them as a supplement from the health food stores and online. Uh, olive leaf extract, you can get that from supermarkets. Uh, absolutely fantastic. These are antimicrobial. They ha all help rebalance the gut microbiome. They've got so many benefits around the body. Uh, and, and by the way, all of these, including lowering hypertension and the risk of heart attack and stroke. So I'm putting this in perspective for you, okay? All the positive side effects of this. So olive leaf extract is an absolute must. Easy to get, easy to purchase and not cheap. Coercetin, uh, a bit of an unknown. It's, it's uh, found in high concentrations in onions and lesser in apples, but in all fruits. And it's a pretty amazing, uh, what's called a polyphenol. Amazing in terms of what I can do. I, in fact, every time I research a new topic, right through from hypertension to candida coercion and just keeps coming up time and time again. Now you can get it as a supplement. Uh, noni is another one, noni juice, which you can get. 
silver nanoparticles. You can get that from chemists and good health food stores. Uh, Kytosan is getting harder to find. You can get all these online, by the way, too. Uh, and, and that's been shown to be effective in candida. And of course, xylitol. It's not a supplement as such, but I put it down here because a lot of people say, well, what can I add as a, as a sweetener? Because I can't use sugar. That's a definite no-no. I can't use the um, artificial sweeteners um, that they, go in all the soft drinks and so on. They're an absolute no-no. They're worse than sugar, believe it or not, in terms of candida. So xylitol is one of the ones. And I actually find that the fermentation of xylitol in the gut actually helps control candida. So you'll find xylitol is some of the additions on um, some of the fermented drinks, for example, in, on kombuchas and so on, commercial kombucha brands, you can find xylitol and you can find it in other ones, uh, but it's a it's a good sweetener. It, it actually has a, a lot of benefits in terms of rebalancing the, the oral microbiome as well. So they're the supplements that you can consider. Now there, again, dozens more I could have put up there, but I don't want to make it too complex. So with those, the supplements, Let's go and look at the final program. How does this all look together? And one of the things about this program, though, is it's holistic. It incorporates so many aspects. And you've got choice. And what I'm doing now is I'm going to perhaps suggest to you certain things that you can do. But if you can't, find one of the other ones to substitute. You don't have to do all of it, you see. You just have to find ones that you can do to fit into your program. And depending on how serious you are. So in terms of you know lifestyle changes and so on. We've got eliminate sugars, that's an absolute must. Get rid of the processed carbohydrates, that's an absolute must. And I'd really love you to try fasting. If you can do it 12 hours without eating, fantastic, okay? Um, by the way, don't overeat. Overeating sets off a lot of triggers in the body to um, cause inflammation and um, facilitate the overgrowth of microorganisms like candida. So overeat, keep your meals small. Keep your meals small, um, but start a fast if you can. Perhaps uh, try a, a 14 hour, 16 hour, 18 hour would be fantastic for just a couple of days to really get your body in the, the process of eliminating everything and controlling it, getting the blood sugar level down, stopping all the food. And, and of course, here it comes into eating the oils, um, the, the, the healthy oils, the coconut oil, um, cranberry and cur curcumin. Uh, there's some of the added foods you can have. Curcumin, remember, is, is turmeric and cranberry. You can get it all through markets. However, remember, go for the 100% and add a little bit of fiber into that as well. You'll get a double bonus. That's what I tend to do. Um, so you've got all those programs. You've got essential oils. Which ones of those can you add? Well, if you're, if you're involved with some people who do essential oils, you've probably got a fantastic selection. I have a marvelous, marvelous selection of essential oils that I call on for different things. And of course, rosemary and oregano are two of my favorites. Now, I also use them extensively as herbs. I grow, I grow lots of those herbs in my, in my garden. So I take them out, I, I actually um, uh, grind them up, a little, dry them, grind them up, and I make them into both something to add to food and something that I can make into a spray. So if you've got candida overgrowth on your, or any fungal growth, and in fact, on your, uh, anywhere outside your body, your, your between your toes or under your armpits or anywhere like that, um, you can actually make these herbs into a spray and spray it on, on a regular basis. And it's just cooked up. I've got a little video on that you can watch on YouTube as well. And then um, probiotics, uh, the Saccharomyces boulardii, an absolute must, along with Lactobacillus and Bifidobacter. And you're going to say, well, how much should I take? Well, let me tell you, all of these things I've been talking about are extremely safe. Now, the one thing I did raise awareness about was with rosemary, with essential oils, always dilute and make sure they're food grade. But coming back to here, these are extremely safe. So what you want to do is you can get some supplements, some powdered supplements, some capsules, they've got them in tablets, a whole raft of things now, and just increase the dose a little bit. Increase the dose, because what you're after is a little bit of a, you know, a kickstart to help getting it going in. And usually the dose that you're getting is more of a maintenance dose rather than an elimination and cleansing dose. And finally, vitamin A, D, and C, add some green tea and olive leaf extract that you can get from the health food store online or, or in, in fact, some cases even big supermarkets. So you've got all these. Now, the one thing to be wary of is um, when microorganisms die, 
they release toxic chemicals which are the makeup of their cells and when they release them they can actually cause impact as well so it's not uncommon to have some negative side effects as a result of the microorganisms of the fungi dying and that means that you might get some of the you might get a bit of brain fog you might get some of the symptoms even a little bit worse over a short period of time over a couple of days so my, my message is understand that that you may get some um, kill effects as you kill off the, the fungi and um, that it can increase some of the some of the symptom signs and symptoms however what I would also suggest is you drink lots and lots and lots of liquids whether it's lemon in the morning uh, green tea during the day anytime but lots and lots of water to rebalance it off so what I've done here is I've given you a full program and this full program does work. I know it works because I've been teaching this now for over 20 years. It, it also, interestingly enough, works as an anti-helicobacter and a, it helps to reset your gut microbiome as well, which has many, many other benefits in terms of arthritis and uh, diabetes and a raft of other conditions, as I've highlighted time and time again. So please push the subscribe button share it with your friends and I'd love to get this information out to people. Please send us off any questions you've got.